Thanks a lot, Silver Dollar. They bring us our news and weather on this beautiful Friday morning, TGIF, and all that. And good morning, Pagosa, with the Pagosa Springs Medical Center is getting started right now. We have a guest here, Jason Webb, who's been here before, director of EMS there at the Medical Center. Good morning, Jason. Welcome back. (laughs) Yeah, it is. (laughs) And thank you. I know it's early and it's been busy. I'm driving around. There's so many cars and autumn, you know, just all kinds of vehicles and sirens. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a lot going on. <laughs> a lot on. going on, man. That scanner is busy. It is. For so sure. I know you are. <laughs> yes, sir. So thanks for dropping by. I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. What's, uh, what's going on? I know, yeah, you had a big night last night, too. So <laughs> yeah, a little, little network issues network. at the hospital, but we're, we're working through that. It was a late night, That's but uh, excited to come down and talk about a few things that the medical center has going on, uh, heading into the summer. Yeah. Tell us. All what's right. What's happening? The first thing I wanted to talk about was um, if you drive by the medical center right now, there's actually uh, signs of construction. Like most uh, hospitals in this country, uh, expansion is a, is a thing as we keep up with the needs of our communities that we serve. So our, our current hospital has fencing up and clear construction zones that are happening there. And these are on, for the most part, uh, not the main building, not the main hospital itself, but some adjacent buildings that are on the campus itself. And we're currently working on um, our medical wellness building, which for people to uh, know where that is, for those that have been in Pagosa for a long time, um, Dr. Jim Pruitt uh, ran a practice that a lot of people uh, utilized over the years before the medical center was built. Um, and now that building is owned by the medical center. So it's the old Dr. Pruitt building, but we're calling it the medical wellness building, in which we really hope that we can uh, launch what we're calling the health in motion service line. Um, And so the construction that I was talking about uh, is aimed at trying to hit a target at the beginning of 2025 to to launch that service line. That's health in motion? Is that a... Yeah, health in motion. So um, the the hospital has... uh, has put together basically three service lines, uh, at least least to start. Uh, Maybe the vision's a little bit broader, but to start, we're looking at um, trying to do a few things. Um, Most of it is expanding current services that we have and giving them more spaces so that they can see more patients and and manage uh, more needs. Those service lines primarily are our uh, physical therapy, uh, line, which we we already have physical therapy at the hospital that helps support people and get people back on their feet and move in and get stronger, and we're looking to expand that. Our sports medicine, which is kind of attached to our orthopedic, or it is not just kind of, it is attached to our orthopedic uh, surgery specialty that we have, um, in which we're going to have three uh, very smart physicians managing that, all orthopedic surgeons with some sort of subspecialty, specialty, or generalization, Mm -hmm. um, but able to help people with all types of sports injuries. Um, And then the last is uh, a service line that's already up and running, but we're looking to give it more space, um, which is uh, the Interventional Pain Management Program, which is um, not just a, that's not a program for, um, you know, just uh, medication type pain management, but they actually do procedures that help relieve uh, pain, back pain, arm pain, leg pain, um, from various injuries or illnesses that may happen. So those three service lines, physical therapy, sports medicine, and uh, interventional pain management, we're going to put into that building. Um, and that is our health in motion service line. Okay. Yeah. Um, like I said, we're shooting for the beginning of the year to have the construction done. Um, there's also going to be a uh, community wellness room within the building. Um, along with eight exam rooms and a physical therapy space, um, and some offices for the uh, clinicians to be able to document and chart and work in. Um, but that community wellness room, um, the vision for that is to be able to put on support groups and classes uh, for those, like as an example, those with diabetes or heart issues or a cancer support group, or it can go on and on and on, but to be able to have people who have like illnesses or life um, difficulties that they can um, that they can uh, they can support each other with and the space there to be able to do that the current structure the current um, structure of that building it's a two-floor building and right now we're focusing just on that first floor and I'm sure uh, the administrative team have ideas for the second floor we're just not there yet so we're shooting for this Mm -hmm. uh, 2025 service line of 
of uh, Health in Motion and uh, hoping to be able to get this up and running for the community, which I'm really excited about. Um, people love to be outdoors and do uh, fun things, and your body's got to be able to move to be able to do that. <laughs> right. You're not going to hike very well with crutches. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, so that's the Medical Wellness Building, MWB. MWB. Nice. Yeah, very <laughs> exciting. That is. Wow. So we'll watch out for the construction and all that. Well, <laughs> exciting. Yeah, that's right there. That's a pretty visible corner, too. I did want to shout out um, the uh, the foundation, the Mary Fisher Foundation. They hosted a recent gala that yes. uh, was helping support um, this this cause that we're doing. And uh, it was uh, at the Alley House. It was a great event. I got to go and take my wife and met you there. Well, it was yeah, a lot yeah, of fun. It was awesome. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, it's a group of people that great are very, group of people. very committed to the hospital and, uh, and its services and help to raise money to help to help get to this point where we can try to achieve this goal that has been laid out in front of us. Mm-hmm. Right on. That's good to know that our money's going to a good cause here. A very special cause, something we're very proud of. So, thanks for the update on the MWB. Yeah. <laughs> and that's uh, that's going to be exciting. <laughs> so, what else, Jason uh, Webb? Yeah, so the next big kind of uh, exciting thing I wanted to talk about will be our second annual uh, Archuleta County Tough Enough to Wear Pink Rodeo. So, this is a, a very cool right. event that we did last year. Um it's another special group of, of uh, patients and people and providers that um, we like to work for and highlight. Um, and it's all surrounding our cancer center. So the Tough Enough to Wear Pink Rodeo is the rodeo that, uh, one of the rodeos that's at the county fair that's going to be on August 2nd. And everybody wears pink and comes out and supports all the rodeo riders, but all of the money that is raised at this event um, goes to support the cancer center. And uh, for those that don't understand uh, what cancer capabilities we have, but at the hospital, we do have a cancer center with, you know, board certified oncologist and uh, an infusion center where medications can be given, treatments can be given. And this is absolutely a key um, resource in the community. I can say that from a personal standpoint, um, very uh, people that are close to me have, have had cancer um, prior to actually this um, service line opening. And if you have cancer in Pagosa, it's very, uh, prior to our, our, our service line opening, it was very challenging um, to go get treatment. You usually had to go get treatment somewhere in, a, in another community, somewhere far away. And so that involved a lot of traveling and uh, car rides. And that's really hard on people that, that are, are sick with cancer. So uh, a few years ago, the cancer center got up and running, and it's been very successful. And we've... Um, uh, partnered with the 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 Archuleta County Fair to do this rodeo, and last year I don't know, did you get to go to that one? Well, I, I was away, but I heard it, it was huge. Okay, it was really big. Amazing, yeah. There was a lot of pink there. There's pink, pink. everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a few things that happened that I kind of wanted to talk about at the pink rodeo. I mean, uh, uh, all the riders they participate and 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 get in the pink show. Um, there's a big pink tent that sells uh, various merchandise. That again, the proceeds go to our cancer center to support equipment so that we can continue to monitor and continue to deliver medications and treatments um and there's t-shirts and all kinds of stuff for the kids and they paint your hair pink and all that kind of stuff um so that's a lot of fun and the other thing uh another thing that that happens there is uh individuals um in their show of support for this cause uh shave their head so mm-hmm. last year i did that you did <laughs> yeah i told them this year i'm out although I, i've already shaved my head for the summer i got my summer cut on <laughs> summer, already <laughs> yeah, i know <laughs> but last year i did not i was i grew it out on purpose and then there was uh, i believe five or six of us i can't remember um, that uh, go out in the arena and we get our head shaved and really, our beard right shaved. Right in front of everyone. Yeah, right in front of oh, everybody. Wow. The bulls are behind you. You're in the radio Ooh. fairground. Um, this year, I heard, I haven't confirmed this, but I think my, uh, our sheriff, Mike LaRue, might be participating. We know we have one uh, member, uh, John uh, Lazolan. Uh, he works at the medical center has, who has said he's going to do it. And I've put a challenge out to a lot of the public safety personnel to see if anybody's willing to jump in. Last year, we had... Uh, a representation, I think, from all the public safety agencies out there that wow. did that, right. um, and it's just a cool thing to sh- to show our support for people who are 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 you know they're they're dealing with cancer and everything that goes with it. Uh, most people have somebody either they've experienced it or they have a family or friend that they know about that, and this can be really hard. And I think it's great that the community can come together and host an event to try to raise some money 
to help support um Help support our cancer center. center. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, it's the other events are still happening. You know, the normal traditional fair events. PSMC will have a, uh, you know, a showing down there. I'm sure we'll have a tent and a booth for information. Our EMS group usually does a stop the bleed demonstration, so people can kind of really see what we teach in our classes. Um, but really, the big event uh, down there is all about this uh, tough enough to wear pink and trying to support our cancer center. And uh, I really look forward to it. And again, it's going to be on August second. Cool. Yeah, that's that's the county fair right around the corner. Yeah, <laughs> it's coming up soon. Yeah, I all mean, this is <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, that's thanks for that. I'm going to add that to my calendar right here. Yeah, I look forward to seeing you out there. You're going to put your uh, your name. <laughs> Maybe in I that should well? shave my head. That'd be fun. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Is it? Tell, what's that like? Ah, uh, it is kind of fun. It yeah. is a little weird though, because I've never gotten a haircut with like a thousand people looking at me. Yeah. But um, we did Is it. There's it like a, a barber that does the yes, work. Yes, someone. Yeah, it's not know, with it, experience or I, whatever. I'll tell you what happened. Was, <laughs> okay. uh, yeah. they, they are barbers. The, they're ladies that uh, and a gentleman that do hair in the community. And you know, for the event, it's kind of the down and dirty, and they just kind of get it off you. Um, but then after the fact, they clean you up so that you don't look disheveled, you know, that you're able to get right. it so it looks smooth again. So, uh, but most people, you know, if you want to look a little younger or whatever, I mean, most people thought I was 20 after that happened, really? which was far, far off the mark. So, um, but, uh, <laughs> Anybody that wants to do that, uh, I recommend reaching out to Jody Scarpa at the hospital. She's a big uh, driver of this event Mm -hmm. uh, and supporter of it, and uh, she rallied the people that were going to do it last year. So if anybody wants to jump in or even just come down and and support somebody that's going to be helping with this, um, that would be great. Um, So, yeah, that's the Tough Enough to Wear Pink Rodeo, and we're looking (laughs) forward to it. Yeah. Tough enough to get shaved. <laughs> that's really what it's about. Right? I kind of felt that way. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a bold move. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so, um, and I believe uh, last year even um, Cherry Pierce, um, oh. she actually cut some of her hair. She did not shave oh, her head, okay. but she cut a big chunk of her hair. And I thought that was actually really cool. It's one thing for a male to go yeah, out there and yeah, shave yeah. and a couple, you know, days yeah. later you're better. But, you know, having a lady out there, that was really, really cool. So good job, uh, Harry, on that. Fantastic. So uh, we're speaking with Jason Webb, director of EMS at Pagosa Springs Medical Center. And uh, this is uh, one of those medical centers that owns their own uh, ambulance service. Yeah. Yeah, so that's cool. <laughs> um, We've talked a lot about that. So. Yeah, I've, on the show I've, I've come on many times to talk about how proud I am of our EMS service. Um, for those that are new listeners or are, are unaware, you know, a lot of uh, communities have very functional EMS services. They're usually through the fire service or their own county base or even their own entity. They can be their own special district as well. There's lots of ways to structure an EMS mm-hmm. service, mm-hmm. but we're one of eight services in the state that are still owned by a hospital, mm-hmm. and I think that's super cool. Um, allows us to really connect with our emergency services and provide a high level of care in the community for those that are having emergencies. Um, we've definitely seen, I wanted to hit a couple of points on uh, EMS um, before the break here in that, um, you know, town is filling up. I mean, as yeah. you started the show off, there's yeah. a lot of people, there's a lot of sirens happening, the forests are open, a lot of people are here, um, and our, uh, our, our volume's been up. And I wanted to highlight a couple of things for those that uh, may be new to the area or visiting the area. Um, we've seen just recently an uptick in a lot of people having difficulty, uh, I think, with the altitude, difficulty with the heat, uh, being extra dry. And, and we have a term that we go on, it's called syncope, which is basically passing out, syncope. Syncope is the medical term for a brief loss of consciousness um, that resolves on its own, usually when you're uh, horizontal. Anyway, we've, we've How do actually you spell that S Y N C O P E syncope. Okay. Um, Never heard that. Yeah, we've seen a, a lot of that as of late. I think the temperatures are up, um, and I wanted to. Uh, say, you know, this isn't always avoidable. Sometimes there's, there's many causes for syncope, but there are some very preventable causes of syncope. And the biggest one, which you hear all the time when you come here related to altitude sickness and all those things is to stay hydrated. So staying hydrated, as simple as that is, avoids a lot of problems, uh, in your body by being hydrated, your, uh, your circulatory system, your heart, your blood vessels, all of that are nice and full. And so they, they're able to build pressure and they're able to move blood around your body. They're able to perfuse your brain. 
um, and they're able to help you deal with altitude better when you when you when you have that blood volume that's that's nice and high. Um, a common thing: people are on vacation. They like maybe to have a few drinks. They come from lower altitude up here. It's very dry, and then the next thing you know, they're they're not feeling so well. And we're able to fix that pretty easy with some hydration. But I wanted to point out that. Uh, uh, you can avoid that by, you know, staying up on that water intake and kind of drinking more than you probably normally would. Mm-hmm. Um, that'll help avoid all of that. Mm-hmm. So, um, other EMS things that we have going on, um, outside of my prevention me- message, uh, recently we, we helped out with, uh, um, POPOA, I think they called it the Camp 911. I don't know if you heard about it, um, but it was a uh, it was a, just a one day kind of summer camp for the young tykes. It was held over at the community center, the POPOA community center, which we had uh, fire service there, the sheriff's office was there, our dispatch center was there, um, and we were there. Um, Anyway, it's, it's just a, what it does is it allows the kids to be able to hang out with us and we show them what we do and let them play in our rigs and do different types of skills. And it's a huge event. It's all surrounding safety, uh, prevention, uh, injury prevention and, and younger people, and also teaching them, you know, about the, the public safety entities and how to contact them through 911, um, what's appropriate for a 911 call versus what is not, and that they are able as kids to call 911. Um, anyways, it was a lot of fun. I, I believe there was about 50 kids that were there at that one event. Mm. Um, they get to do some swimming at the end of it and le- learn some water safety. So I wanted to throw that out there, one, that we participated in it, and that's our second time doing it but for those that may have missed it look for it it, it generally shows up on facebook in the paper uh, and the sun um hosting it we we have it in june um each year and so it's a it's an event that kids really like to go to and we have a lot of fun working with it um oh, that's so one cool. of my favorite things was the uh the sheriff's office they use their rope system and they use the pulleys and they did a tug of war but they oh. had the pulleys in there oh, wow. so it gives the kids the advantage but they don't always know that so then they're getting to do you know they're getting to do a tug of war against a bunch of big sheriff deputies and win which is kind of cool <laughs> that's a, pulleys that's um fascinating then fascinating physics there with the pulleys that yeah, that's totally. brilliant. Um, and, and one more event uh, that I wanted to, to shout out that we were able to participate in um, the medical center, our primary care clinic. Um, Andrew Spangler, our training center coordinator, he he worked to coordinate with our school system to to do sports physicals, and we did that. I think it was at the end of May, um, in which uh, we we assist. Um, all the athletes of the school and their parents to get their physicals done. And we partnered with a group called who we play for, who do cardiac screenings. Um, I've had Andrew on the show before where he talks about, uh, you know, some kids have these uh, abnormalities within their heart that, be, that are undetected. And then through exertion is when, when they show up and there can be um, bad outcomes from that. So this is a screening um, that they do where they do an EKG on the kid um, and look for those potential things that uh, might not otherwise been diagnosed. It was a very successful event, um, and uh, we were able to get the kids uh, physicals for those that want to play sports and so that they're ready to go for the next year, and then we were able to screen all of them. And I will say and um, that there was there was a person that was flagged, which was really cool because that's exactly uh, yeah. really cool in the Focus, sense of yeah. that's exactly what we're trying to do. I, I feel for the, them that may have something that may need to be treated, but... Um, at least we found it before you know something got worse. So um, we we look to continue to plan to do these uh, again. Um, we'll definitely do the big spring event again, and um, maybe a fall event, and try to continue to screen. We've screened at the middle school and we've screened at the high school, and we're trying to get uh, as many kids as possible. And we want them also to see our primary care doctors to screen to make sure outside of their heart that they're also good to go and ready to uh, play sports and represent uh, our pirates. So. Um, that was a really cool event. That's cool. And it is 23 past our show this morning is brought to you by Pagosa Mountain Sports. We'll be right back. All right. <laughs> yeah, we're the third rock from the sun here on KWUF. Good morning, Pagosa, with the Pagosa Springs Medical Center. Jason Webb, director of EMS. We talked a little bit about workspace and education space and all that. And what is going on with the practice-based health education here in Archuleta County? Yeah, well, this, uh, last time I was on the show, I talked a lot about this uh, this, this really cool grant opportunity that our uh, deputy chief and some uh, some of our um, employees at uh, EMS put together that we were awarded in, in, uh, at the medical center. And then it created all these education resources in line with 
um, trying to build uh, careers for people that are from Pagosa. And the idea is to uh, recruit and retain at the hospital all through uh, education with the idea of um, when you get educated, then you can move in your job or you can feel confident in your job. And so um, it, it, it purchased, uh, it, it provided some grant funding for the actual classes that we host at the, at the training center, at the medical center, um, a high fidelity simulation lab, um, which we talked a lot about at the last show of uh, this mannequin that is just human-like that we can program to, to perform in various different ways. And, uh, and then one of, uh, another cool one is the hospital was able to have an education coordinator who's a gal named Molly Whitting. She's one of the uh, past ER nurses, a great lady. She's, uh, she's, um, kind of spearheading clinical education within the, the organization. And I wanted to just give people an update. Um, so talked to a, a pretty big game the last time that we were out and, and we continue to deliver on this. Um, so our first year of tuition that uh, that program paid for, we just finished our EMT class. Um, we had 10 students that graduated from that class. So these are 10 people that have had uh, either none or very little exposure to medicine, and they were able to pass what we call our EMT basic certification. Um, it is a 19-week course. Um, it's very, very challenging. It's high pace, lots of information, kind of drinking from a fire hose. Um, but of those 10 people that we graduated, what we really care about is, yes, we want the graduation, but then to be a, a practitioner, you have to have your license. And so you have to sit for a test. Um, it's called the National Registry Test. Mm. And uh, all 10 of our students that graduated passed that test on their first attempt, which is far above uh, any national average of any other program in the, in the country. Um, I think we're at the, the top end of that scale as in terms of uh, quality of programs. It's all put on by our EMS guys um, that are that are well-versed in knowledge in the real, real uh, delivery of emergency services. And so these t- uh, students, all 10 of them passed. And I thought that was mm-hmm. um, just a really cool That's thing amazing. to brag about. Um, yes, they're, it is. they're all now in a place where they could uh, apply for a job um, in the clinical side of medicine, um, not necessarily working just for the ambulance, EMT, but right. they can work in the ER or the clinic, or they can work in lab, um, lots of places within our medical center. So it provides a door entry into people um, able to obtain a job through um, starting their career in education here in Pagosa without having to leave. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I actually went to paramedic school. I was living in Denver at the time, so I had to go to Denver. And uh, if, if somebody in Pagosa wanted to become a paramedic, that's where they'd have to go. So we're trying to build programs so they don't have to leave our community. They can stay here, and we can try to create a career through their education and career at the same time. And I'm just really proud of our team, Molly, Andrew, Kelsey, everybody that's involved. Um, I think we've had uh, Andrew and Kelsey on the show. Yeah. Um, they did an outstanding job, hit it out of the park. 100 percent pass rate that's amazing um, it's really cool that so um cool. for those we get a lot of phone calls almost daily well about people wanting to jump in on that program and find that's out more information yeah. uh, i encourage you to call um the ems uh division uh 970-731-5811 uh there's a menu option that kind of comes up um when you call and uh it's pretty obvious which one you, you click to to talk to somebody about education. Uh, Molly and Andrew will be working on what the next dates were for the next year, what other opportunities. Um, we're looking at putting on an IV and phlebotomy course, um, teaching people how to read EKGs, <coughs> etc. cetera. So um, through those... Uh, through calling the that number that I gave out, the 731-5811, um, those that are interested can start to seek information on uh, on, on uh, what they're looking for. And we hope to work with you, and we hope, honestly, that many of you work for us after we are able to educate <laughs> right. you. That would be yeah, awesome. Yeah, exactly. so, it's very hard to recruit in a small town, yeah. you know. So mm-hmm. this is one of our methods of being able to do that. <laughs> very cool. Well, thanks a lot, Jason. That's great. Our show's just about over here. Time's up. We've got to get to our Western Daybreak Ag News. But thanks so much for dropping by this morning. Thank you, Will. Always <laughs> great to see you, man. <laughs> you too. Jason Webb, Director of EMS, Pagosa Springs Medical Center. And that's our show. Good morning, Pagosa. We'll see you all later. Have a great weekend. Happy 4th. <laughs> we don't talk to you before. Sounds good. Okay. Bye.